Hello Internet, I'm here again with another RPG game video. And today I want to add a thing that I've alluded to in the past several times, and that's inventory. Um, every time I've talked about inventory in previous videos, I've mentioned that the README for RPG game has a little kind of written tutorial on how to add inventory. That is true, uh, but I think there's value in doing a video of it. Uh, and I'll also do the inventory in a slightly different way than I suggested in that README. Uh, there's a ton of ways you could do inventory. So maybe before I get started, I do want to say, because there are so many ways to do inventory, and what do I mean? Okay, here's an example. You could just say, look, my game is, um, you know, like a, like a Diablo-like or um, uh, Borderlands or one of those sorts of things where it's like, you know, every item is, is pretty much unique. All the major items in the game are very unique, right? It's a gun with a bunch of random stats, or a sword with a bunch of random stats, or armor with a bunch of random stats. And so everyone needs to be totally different. And yeah, you'll have a few items um, that, that don't have variation, you know, a couple materials or, or health packs or whatever. But really, the, 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 one of the draws of the game is having these very unique sort of items. If that's what you wanted to do, then you would want an inventory system that reflects that. You would say, Look, I know you're not going to have hundreds and hundreds of items. Maybe you have a bank where you can store some some stuff, but you know you're going to have a pretty relatively small number of items, and each item is going to be mostly very unique, and that's what we care about. And so that's you would make your database reflect that. Another thing you could do, you could go the other way and say, no, this is more like um, I don't know, Minecraft is maybe kind of a weird example, but you know, there's going to be tons of materials, um, or maybe Breath of the Wild, right? It's like there's all these kinds of items. And then there's this crafting element of, you know, that, that isn't present in something like a, a Diablo. I mean, they've got minor crafting by slotting gems or whatever, but you know what I mean, right? You, if you wanted to go on a crafting heavy game, then you would say, okay, um, the items are by and large going to be the same. So what's really important is, is to keep track of quantities of things. So, you know, maybe you have 256 dirt. That's going to be very common. I don't want to have 256 dirt items in the database. I want to have dirt. How many? 256 or whatever. Why 256? Because I'm a silly programmer. Um, and then there's in between kind of things like a like a classic MMO. You know, you you have um, some unique items, but also some. Uh, you know, oh, I've got, here's my cloth, and I use that to make a cape, and this cape is different or whatever, right? So depending on the kind of inventory you system you want in the game, uh, you're gonna you're gonna architect that differently. And I would also say before deciding what kind of inventory system you want, don't just pick one because it's cool. Think about what is the, the draw of the game. The, again, the whole, I don't know, one of the exciting thing about playing Diablo or Borderlands is you open a chest and you're like, oh my god, what kind of magic, you know, am I going to get in an uncommon or rare or legendary? Is it going to have better stats? Um, what's in this chest? <laughs> you know, that's what's exciting about those games. But other games, that's not the point. You know, if, you, if you're like, no, I want cooking. Um, and, and that's the point. So think about the experience you want. What is the kind of game you're making? Pick an inventory system to support that. You don't want it to contradict or fight with, you know, the, the goal you're trying to make out of your game. Um, so yeah, pick an inventory system that will enhance the feeling of the game you're trying to create, uh, synergize, and then code accordingly. So again, I'm going to do one particular inventory system, but it might not be the one that you want for your game. So um, I don't know if it all sounds really crazy complicated and you're like, Ben, just show me how to make an inventory system, then go for it, follow along. Um, but if, you, if you've got some, some goals of your own, uh, then you, you, you'll probably see how to tweak what I'm doing in order to, um, you know, make, make it fit better with the kind of game you're making. Um, so anyway, I'm going to, for this video, make inventory where it is more of that quantity sort of thing, where you're going to have maybe tons of different items, uh, but you will have a, a quantity of them. So let's let's start by making some some things. Let me zoom in here and look at my files. So let's start by making a table as always. I feel like all the videos are, are like this. We need a new table to store our inventory. Um, so I'm going to call this, I guess, player inventory. And and I'm thinking, does this really matter? I don't know. There's a couple ways to do a thing. I'm, I'm thinking ahead a little bit. I'm sorry. Let, well, listen to me. Let's, <laughs> let's just do this. Okay, so we got some boilerplate. Who owns this item? Uh, let's have a, a convenient, right? This is the convenience thing. Talked about that before. Um, I really don't know how much I should dwell on the details of Entity Framework and how much to just assume that you're familiar at this point, but I don't know. Uh, this is incredible. 
I think it knows this because I was kind of playing around with, with the things in a, a copy of the game and it's remembered. So yeah, I want to have an item type. Um, another way that you could do this is to have another table where you have all the items in the game. But there's pros and cons. If you're going to have data that doesn't change a lot, right? Like if you have in your game stone or dirt, that's not going to change all the time. And so putting it in a database is you're adding some database load. Databases are often a bottleneck in a, in a large application as, as the player base grows. The database can get very slow. And if we're going to be looking up data all the time that doesn't change, why are we looking it up, right? Why look it up in the, in the database? Uh, there's other things you can do. You could say, well, we're going to cache that, blah, blah, blah. Another thing you could do is, and I say, I'm saying blah, blah, blah. That's a great solution. <laughs> Caching. Caching is great. Um, but another way you could do it for something that you know is never going to change is you could say, look, I'm just going to define them uh, here and I'll say, yeah, meat, wood, iron. These are my, that's literally what I typed in the other window. That's so silly. It really does remember. Um, these are the item types. There's no reason to go and look that stuff up in a database where there's names. You can just keep them here and then you can make, uh, you can code this up. I'll show you how, how, how to do this. We can, we can put that extra data in the game code directly. The downside is if you want to release new items, you need to publish new code. Uh, but if you've got, I don't know, well, how are they going to get the, those items without new code? It depends on how data driven you want the game to be. Um, so anyway, that's all a lot to think about. I wouldn't worry about that too hard. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and do enums here. This is one way to do it. So here's our table. Who owns this item? What is the item? And how many do they have? Perfect. And that, that will be for the game. So I'm, I'm not going to have in this game, right? There aren't like unique items like, oh, this, you know, this piece of dirt is different. You know, no, they're, they're all dirt. <laughs> um, and if you had um, whatever, if you're going to craft, maybe there's, there's cooking, maybe there's, there's oranges and flour, and you're going to combine them and you'll make tons of orange pies, but all the orange pies are the same. There are ways you could mix and match. You could start putting other properties on, on here to make things be distinct. Um, but anyway, let's let's go with this this basic example for the purposes of this video. Uh, I need to put this table in the database. So this is player inventory. So public DB set, player inventory. I guess inventory, that's kind of an interesting table name. I'm always tempted to call that. No, this is still player inventory. You you generally want I mean inventory is already plural, yes, no. I don't know. I'll go for inventories. Let's just go. AI is smarter than me, let's say. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with uh, we'll go with player inventories. Uh, okay, and as always, now that we've got this going, we need to ask um, Entity Framework to make us a migration. So I'm going to do that real quick. Get over here. I can zoom in here as well. So .NET, EF, migrations, add. Yep, and we'll say um, add player inventory. Inventory. Oh, and let's not forget, because I always forget, stop the thing and run the thing. Build started. Wonderful. Think, 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 think. Oh, it's really thinking. I'm not asking my computer to do that. Many hard things am I? There we go. Build succeeded. And I was creating a shadow state because of conflicting property. Uh-oh. I, have I done something strange? Let me see. So player inventory required good owner ID. Ooh, I've done something exciting. What have I done? Player inventory. A conflicting property with a simple name owner ID exists, but is not mapped or already used for another relationship or incompatible with the associated primary key type. Are these not, am I crazy? Are these not goods? They're longs. Ah, okay. That's my fault. Um, well, that's fine. Let's go ahead with this. So I'm, I'm used to doing goods for other projects. I forgot in this project, all the IDs are longs. That's my bad. Um, but that's okay. It's good to see what, how to recover if, in case you mess up. So uh, the way to recover, if you've made a migration you don't want, they will tell you to do this um, undo using EF migrations remove. That can actually be very not great. So there's this big file here, RPG database model snapshot. Um, and it keeps a list of all the tables, like what is the final state that, that your database is in, assuming all these these different migrations have run, all these different changes have run. When you ask it to undo, it rarely undoes it and restores it to exactly how it was. So I don't like to rely on that. Instead, I use git to revert the changes. Whether or not you have this 
commit tab on the side or if it's Visual Studio, I think it's on the other side somewhere for source control. Um, whether or not you have this depends on whether or not you used Git to clone the project in the first place or whether or not you downloaded a zip. If you, if, if you download a zip of the game, you're not going to have this option. So that's one advantage of having Git. And I should probably make a whole video in case you're not familiar with Git on how to use it. Uh, but I mean, spoilers, Git from version control and you would put in the URL here for um, RPG game and then, and then you would download it through, through Git. So that's, that's a way to do it. So I recommend anyway, when you're doing migrations, I would recommend if you have Git, don't do the thing that EF says here. It's more trouble than it's worth. I mean, it mostly works, but every now and again, it doesn't. Um, maybe they've made that better by now, but I come here and say, revert this change, roll it back, get rid of it, and then delete these things. You can just delete them here. Uh, that said, if you if you haven't used Git to, to check out, to, to download RPG game, go ahead and use EF migrations remove to roll back that change. It, it mostly works. <laughs> it's mostly very good. So anyway, now that I have, whoops, uh, rolled that back, uh, I will go ahead and make the migration again, and we should have the proper uh, database, and it's not going to whine and complain. And another lesson, don't ignore these messages. If these messages come up and you've never seen it before, <laughs> right, when working on the project, be like, hold on a sec, what, what happened? There's something's wrong here, and if you can't figure it out, figure it out before you continue, because the further you go with that mistake, then you're just going to get in a weird situation. So anyway, this looks all good. <laughs> we've got a, we've got a long, um, let's, oh, never mind. I was forget. We don't need to do that. We just run it. And when we run it, we will have that database, uh, or have that database update. Let me run, by the way, a high D SQL, which I should really, I have this portable installation. I've used this before. All right, let's connect to local. Nope. Unnamed, is this it? Yep, RPG game. Apparently it's called Unnamed. Why am I renamed that? RPG game. All right. Player inventory is perfect. Uh, there should be nothing in this table. Also perfect, we don't expect anything in this table. So let's stop the game and let's make a way to get some items. And this will be pretty simple. Um, let's not get the items yet. Let's hack ourselves some items and display them uh, because if, if we first add to the game a way to get items, but don't have an easy way to validate, and we can look at the inventory. I guess we can go either way. I don't know. I like to start with, show me the data on the game or whatever, on the application. Show me the data. I'll hack some in. And then once I'm sure that that's all working, then I make ways to put the data in the game. But fair enough, you could go the other way, right? You could start by saying, no, I'll just make the mechanics add it to the game, and I'll use Database Viewer to, to view the data. Either way. I'm going to start by hacking in some things. Um, so let's go ahead and insert a row, uh, which will be a little exciting because we'll need to add GUIDs and things. Maybe there's pros and cons then. Let's ask for a new GUID. Looks like a great GUID. Um, and actually, something I learned recently for SQLite is it is important that these GUIDs be in all capital letters. Um, so maybe reasons like this are like, and, and this is just because I'm using SQLite locally. If you are using a better database, then you wouldn't have this issue. Oh my god, what am I doing? Why am I so in GUID mode? I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm in GUID mode. Uh, we don't do an ID that way at all. <laughs> we have an owner ID. I don't know why my brain is in GUID mode. Um, and let's say there's wood and I have like 10 of them. Sorry, I'm also confused. We need to use the number value. So if we go back to uh, wood. So wood is number one implicitly. And I think if we hover over this, it'll tell us. Yeah, wood has a value of one. Um, it is good. I've mentioned this before in other videos. If you rearrange these without explicitly numbering them, if I didn't have these numbers on the end, then wood would now be zero and meat would be one. So if you ever rearranged these, you would end up with, um, you know, anything that was wood is now something else or whatever. So thing one, I don't know. Thing one is number these. <laughs> thing two is know that if you don't number them, then you better not re rearrange or like don't add anything before because you, you change all of the numbers. Um, so it is very good to explicitly number these things. Another thing you can do and something else I'm used to, which is why I got confused here, is um, you can tell it, you, you can add some extra stuff in here to tell the database through Entity Framework to say, hey, don't store the number of these things, store the name. So store the name would instead. That has the advantage of now you can rearrange things. You don't have to assign numbers. The downside is now you can never change this name. Um, 
So, and, and I don't know, if your scare is like, oh no, I want to be able to change item names, don't worry, we're not going to display these uh, item names to players. We're going to do something a little more fancy. So it's not, whatever. there's pros and cons to every choice. The simplest thing to do for now is just numbers. And that's, I don't know, it's not unusual. It's not weird to do that. Strings, honestly, is probably the less common thing. So using numbers here, uh, you'll probably see that in other code more than you would see in other things. So, so that's a better way to go for it. So anyway, this should give us 10 meat for uh, a player who, for some reason, didn't get an ID. That's interesting. Let's give them an ID. Oh, no. A five? Okay. It gave it the ID. I probably confused it by typing in a GUID that first time. Okay. All the rows should have an ID. It was mysterious to me that it was blank. Something's wrong, but I just hit F5 and it reloaded. Um, so anyway, oh my goodness, let's make this inventory display uh, in the house. So if we go to pages and we go to my house, let me make this a little bigger. So here we load, we show the characters uh, when they've loaded. Let's do something else. Let's say if the characters are null or we're gonna have my inventory, which doesn't exist yet. We'll say loading house, right? Uh, and then similar to how I loop over all the characters here, I would loop over all the, all the items. But I don't know, I'm not gonna get too far ahead of myself. Let's define my inventory. It's kind of weird to have it there and not defined. So here we would say, great, here's a list of player inventory, and that will be my inventory. Boop. And if we go here, load, we might want to rename this, or maybe not. Oops, that's not. We'll load characters and also load inventory. That's what we want to do on initialization this component. I was thinking maybe rename this to be called load everything. I don't know, load house and do both of the things in here. But there might be times when in the game that you know you want only want to reload one or the other. Like, you know, you've used up some items to prepare a recipe. You don't need to reload the characters, just the inventory. So it could be helpful to have these separate. It probably is. So let's do uh, let's do them separately. And the code is very similar, but we want to load from player inventories and just assign this to player inventory. Oh, or sorry, my inventory. That's what we call it. So there we go. A bunch of copy paste and we're there. Make a database connection. Look at the player inventory table. Find everything owned by the current player. Give me that as a list. Throw it in my inventory. And we're doing everything nice, a wait and a sync because database can take some time. We don't know how long it'll take. I talk about this every video. I need to stop. Uh, all right. So anyway, that was that's pretty simple, right? <laughs> a little bit of copy paste. We're already loading characters. Loading inventory is very similar. Uh, let's go ahead and make something for this. So I'll just do a heading. I don't know H4. I kind of made that up randomly. Maybe I don't know. More correct would be to make it an H2. That would be the next heading level down. Um, and we will put in some items. So let's say inventory, and we're gonna loop over, we'll say, I don't know, stack maybe, in my inventory. Each thing represents a stack of items, right? 200 wood or whatever, so I don't know, stack seems fine. Uh, and I am gonna put this in another little containing div. Uh, the thinking here, again, I'm kind of thinking ahead and, and, and not speaking through <laughs> through my full thoughts. I'm going to make another, I'm, right, I'm not just copy paste, you know, giving these classes just for fun because this was called characters, I'm going to call this inventory. I'm giving it a class name because I expect I'm going to want to apply some styling to make it, you know, you know, be a grid across, kind of similar to how we have pets go across. We'll probably want inventory items to kind of fill in down here in a grid and to make something laid out like a grid. We'll need some CSS. So. Uh, that's what I am doing. Um, and just thinking ahead to the fact that I will need a class in order to do that. And then in order to arrange the, the items into a grid, there need to be items inside. So that's what this div will be. Each div is the cell for one of the, the items. And then inside we can draw an item and I'm going to use, I don't know, we have character card. I'll call this something else. I'll call this like inventory stack card. I don't know. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Inventory stack is kind of a long name. Um, and this is not defined yet, right? What does this do? It doesn't do anything yet. Uh, so let's make it. <laughs> let's go to components. This is kind of where I've got a bunch of shared, you know, maybe you would look at inventories in other contexts, like, oh, here's a chest that you opened up. Look at all the stuff inside. We would want to reuse this inventory stack to view the items in other contexts. Um, similarly, because of that, other contexts might not be 
a inventory item, right? If you're looking at a chest, it's not going to be a player inventory. It's going to be something else. And so for that reason, rather than pass in the whole stack, I like to do something more like this, where I'm going to pass you in all the little details. I'll pull them apart myself. Even though it feels like a little more work here, it makes the component, like character card or inventory, inventory stack card, more reusable. Um, you don't have to, you know, because if I pass in a stack of type my inventory, then I can only use this when I have a player inventory. But again, maybe I want to display this card in other contexts, in a shop, in a, in a chest, as like, I don't know, here's a quest and here's what you're going to get out of it. Show the, show the stack of items just like in, anywhere else. Uh, so we'll want to be able to, to pass those in separately. So let's say item type, and that would be stack dot type and quantity. It would be the stack quantity. All right. Uh, but again, we still haven't declared this silly thing. We haven't defined what an inventory stack card should look like. So let's do that. Laser component. I'm kind of doing a lot without a lot of coding without any looking. So I'm, I'm a little nervous, but I think it'll work out fine. So let's do parameter. This is a required parameter. It's nice to force us to pass it in. We do want it. Uh, so we'll say, give me the item type. That is the type of the variable. And did I call item type out here? I sure did. So item type. Oh, and actually, a little unfortunate uh, that you have to say required twice. I mean, you don't have to. Uh, editor required was introduced before this required keyword in C Sharp. Like, this is now a language feature. This is a whole code thing, like a class that lives somewhere that comes from, uh, from Blazor, Blazor library out of Microsoft. Uh, so they coded this up before they had this required property. That's kind of too bad. I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't have made this if this was already out, but they didn't. And now this is out. And now we have both. And so we end up using both. Oh, well. Uh, editor required, public, int. We can have a quantity. So let's do, I actually call it quantity, but thanks. Good suggestion. And then we will draw this thing. So what image would we want to give items? Presumably we want to give them images. Maybe I'll even draw some pictures <laughs> as part of this video. Uh, so let's do, let's do a couple of things. We'll do an image here. And let's say the image should be item type get image, which doesn't exist. You know what? Let's not do the image just yet. Let's just throw the item type onto the page so you can see it. And then I'll do a little span and we'll say times and some sort of quantity. So here's the quantity. Let's just do that for now. Actually, let's make that a div so it goes on a new line. Divs by default are block elements, which means they take up the whole row of available space. That'll make it be on the next line from the item type. Um, I don't know, I'm picturing a little like square card with a quantity underneath, kind of like how we have, you know, picture, some info underneath. It doesn't display items the same way. Or maybe it goes in the corner. I don't know. We'll figure it out. And in fact, in preparation, let's give this a... a, a you know, class so that we can style that up later. Um, but again, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself there. So let's hop back to my house, make sure this is going to show something looks like it will. So this is going to look silly. I haven't made any styling at all. But let's run this and I should see meat times 10 or wood, whatever it was that I gave me. Um, let's see that that comes in. I'm using a different browser today for no reason in particular. I haven't used Opera in forever, but I thought, why not? Is it going? Oh, can't convert from long to int. Oh, so apparently I said quantities are long. I expect you to have over 2 billion. So I don't know. That's fine. You're probably never going to have that many of an item. Maybe it would be more proper to, sorry, closing some things. Um, but let's make this be long. Oh, required in order to match. I don't know. I could go back to the to this inventory thing and say, actually, quantity, it only needs to be an integer. Integers count up to 2 billion. Uh, when they're signed, whatever, don't worry about it. Two billion is a lot. It's a lot of items. We'll probably no one ever get two billion of something, but well, who knows? I don't know your game. Maybe they will. So anyway, I shouldn't have uh, moved to a different window before I saw that output. Okay, let's check out my house. And perfect. It says we have 10 meat. Great. Uh, that doesn't look that great. So let's make it look a little better. Let's first hack in some more items. So insert row three. Uh, type would be one. I don't know, let's say I have three of those. And then we'll also add a row. Interesting that is this a, a new bug for Heidi where it's not showing? I thought at first it was just confused because I typed in a GUID and it didn't know what to do anymore, which is fair enough. All right, let's just refresh. Be my house and perfect. Meat, wood, iron. But again, I would like them to kind of go across the page. 
uh, in a nice grid. And then, you know, we'll do some other stuff like what's the image. And again, I mentioned maybe right now we're just put, putting out the raw enum value. So if we go here, right, there's an enum and it's called meat. But what if you had an item that was called like delicious pie? You don't want it to say delicious pie, no space on the page. You would want to show the space, but an enum can't have a space. Uh, and again, maybe later you rename a res uh, one of these enum values. Uh, but you don't want to change the, the name that people see or vice versa. You know, you're calling it wood right now, but later you want to add different kinds of wood. So you're like, look, all the wood that people had are called maple. And then I'm going to add ash as another thing. But I'm not going to rename this because this would fuck up my database if you were doing it by string. I swore in the video. I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, in, we're going to solve all those problems and give us the flexibility to show the names that we want uh, later. So that's another thing that I'll do um, as part of this video. But for now, let's at least make the layout look a little better. So <laughs> if we look at my house, here it is, and we'll check out the CSS. I'm going to do inventory, and we can do really, I think it's the same thing. We want it flex, we want it row, we want to allow it to wrap, and we want a gap. Really, it's the exact same. That said, I don't want to, re I could reuse this, right? I could say, look, characters in inventory, it's everything gritty. Maybe I call it grid, I don't know something. Uh, but I expect as the game goes on, I mean, characters and players are very different things. And I think it's totally reasonable in the future that I might want a different kind of way to display characters. Uh, so I'm not going to try and early optimize by grouping these into one thing. It's up to you. Maybe, I don't know, you might argue, yeah, I'll just put them up when I need to. But I don't know, I'm, I'm just kind of guessing early. This is just an intuition. I could be wrong for this particular project. I don't know where it's going. But from working on other games, I suspect that characters and in inventory are going to diverge in the not too distant future. So I'm just going to leave them separate. Um, it's easy to combine them later. It's also easy to switch. So use your best judgment. And it depends on the kinds of games you make. Uh, you know, which, which, you know, whether or not my guess in this, in this case was a, a good one or a bad one. So uh, anyway, let's reload for that. I think I do need to rerun the project to get the CSS change. And now they should be arranged somewhat. Yeah, good enough with a little bit of break. Uh, the particular width, I think, will come out of if we go to stack. And I'm going to do jump to declaration here. Uh, there's a couple ways to do that. You can hold control and click. You can, there's a keyboard shortcut, F12. You can right click, whatever. There's a bunch of ways to jump into it. I'm going to jump into this component here. And I'm going to call this like stack, I guess. And I'm going to add CSS for this. So inventory stack card. If you think that name is too long, you can call it something else. Oops. Also, I did this wrong. Delete. I have to add dot razor to that. So it is inventory stack card razor, and then it'll add CSS. There we go. You can tell, depending on your IDE, I don't think VS Code does this. Maybe it does. Um, Visual Studio definitely does, and Writer does, and that's a really good hint to you. And that's what threw me off. I was like, hey, wait a minute. It should be displayed as if it's inside, even though it isn't. It's kind of a weird IDE lie, but it's a helpful one. So anyway, this will be stack. We'll say this has a width of, I don't know. And if we look at item type quantity, I think I want the quantity to be positioned. Let's put that somewhere else. Let's say position absolute. I'm going to put it in a corner. So we'll say like the bottom right corner, maybe say right is zero, bottom is zero. Give it a background color of, I don't know, uh, sh sure, I don't know, one of these colors. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I just kind of want to see what it looks like. Give it a border radius. Give it a little bit of padding all the way around the edges so that the text isn't right up against the edge of this background color. That's what I'm going for. Uh, and this position absolute won't work quite right if its parent, which is the stack, doesn't have a position of relative. I need to say that explicitly. Let's look at this again. So this is going to look a little weird without images here. So maybe I should get images in. Um, so if we look at my house, these are on the corner, on the bottom corner, which is great, except that these are, you know, there's only text. There's not an image here. Uh, so let's draw some pictures. That'll be fun. Uh, I've got Inkscape. I've talked about it before. It is a free open source thing. Kind of got a wacky learning curve. It might be extra useful if you haven't used it a lot. 
to see how it's used. So I'll talk through it. Uh, this image, it looks like by my default is 32 by 32. I don't remember the keyboard or the menu for what I'm about to do. Here it is, document properties. I always press control shift D. I've just memorized that by now. But that's where you can set the size of this thing. That said, you don't need to worry about the exact pixel size of an SVG that much because the whole point of an SVG is you can blow it up, shrink it down, it doesn't matter. So if it looks good to your eye on the page as you're doing it here, that's fine. You, you can make it the same size. You'll have no loss of quality when you scale up or scale down because it doesn't have to scale up or scale down. It's all vectors. That's one of the great advantages of an SVG. The only thing that, that I would say does matter more is the relative dimensions, right? This right now is a square. What if you want it to be a little taller than wide? By what ratio? Then you need to you know, do that. Uh, maybe I want it to be 36. I don't know, whatever. I'll do 32 by 32. I think the square icon's pretty standard. Not surprising to anyone. I'll just do that. And then I'll zoom in and I'll draw a little meat. So we all know what like a, a thing of meat looks like, right? You got the like that kind of shape. And then, so and I should, sorry, I should talk about what I'm doing. This is the main tool that I use for outlining shapes. Draw Bezier curves and straight lines. I don't know if people say Bezier, Bezier, I don't know, they shouldn't, it's French, clearly, <laughs> I-E-R. Um, but anyway, the way you use it is you click to, to put the first point. You can also click and drag to make it curved to start. Uh, and then as you click, you're placing more points. But if you click and drag, you're doing splines, or rather Bezier curves. Maybe they're also called splines. I don't know. And then when you loop, when you join back up again, it'll finish the shape. You can also take this opportunity to um, curve this thing. So there you go. Uh, that looks a little weird. I don't like when the points come together like this. So you can do some other things here to say it needs to be that that curve needs to be symmetric on the two sides. That's one thing you can do. Uh, and that'll get you kind of probably, if, you know, if you were starting at one point of a curve, that's probably what you intended. So anyway, that's how you make these crazy shapes. And then yeah, the great thing, the thing I love about SVGs is you can modify them afterwards. If you're like, no, if I did that all wrong, um, you know, actually, I don't even want that point. Press delete. It does try to make them kind of the shape vaguely match what was there before the point. But I can select those points and say, nope, your hard corners again, whatever. You've got all these great tools. Um, I don't know. I love working with vectors because I'll never get it right my first try because I'm a bad artist. So anyway, I made this little shape. I'm going to make this point be a little curvy line. Uh, that was a little exciting. I'm going to try and make this look a little bit more like, whoops, that's not a symmetric one. Uh, make it look a little bit more like a steak. Uh, how come that ended up not symmetric as well? Okay, that looks like a good steak, so let's fill it in with red. There we go. And then I'll put a, a circle. It's hard to see because it's the same, it's using, reusing the same color, but I'll make that be the gross fleshy bone color. Uh, and there you go. There's a, there's a, right? That's a meat. Also, I'm going to just control C, control V this. And I'll have another one. And I'll, once you've got these overlap, like I want to go behind, I want to give a semi 3D look. So if you hit page down, it goes behind. So you can page up, page down to make it move in front and, and in back. And then I'll fill it with something a little darker. So there we go. We have kind of a 3D look for our silly meat. And if you wanted to go and add like, I don't know, you're like, no, it's supposed to have a little flex of, of flesh color on it or whatever, right? Yeah, you can, I mean, you know, whatever, do what you want. That looks stupid. So don't do that. Um, but you could draw little veins, I guess, right? I don't know if you wanted to make your meat extra veiny and gross. Uh, whatever you want to do. I'm, this is good enough for what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and make this um, be the size of the whole canvas. So what I did was select it all. And then if you click on this corner, you can do this. I mean, that's fun for a 3D effect, but I want it to scale left and right, up and down equally. So if you hold control, that is that way. If you do control shift, it does it on the center. So control shift, just control, and then also just shift makes it be just on the center. Right? So um, yeah, I don't know, control shift will do. Um, by default, so you may have noticed something that happened there. Uh, it showed like here, it's like, oh, your lines will be really thin, but then they got thick again. That's kind of weird. Uh, that is because there's all these crazy settings. When scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. So if you turn that on, then the line will actually scale down. And I think that's the default. I've turned it off because, and 
I think this is a good recommendation. I want the line widths for all of my art to be the same. I don't want them to ever get off, right? It would look weird if every item had a different thickness for the outside lines. So for that reason, I like having that off so that even if I want to resize the overall picture, the width of the line doesn't change. So that again, it has kind of a consistent look uh, for the, the art of all the games. So anyway, that's a little thing. All right, let's save this. Uh, I don't know where it's going to go on my computer. Let me let me just make sure it's not going crazy. Um, ah, that's fine. I went to uh, my little video directory where I put all my videos. So D development, C sharp, uh, this RPG game, and then RPG game, WW root. That's where all our web accessible things like images go. Here's images. And I'm going to make a new folder for items. I will call this item steak. I could call it meat. I'm choosing to call it something different, partially for demonstration purposes, to show that the name of the image does not need to match the name of the enum. There's no requirement to do that. Um, that being said, I mean, there, again, pros and cons. You might decide, hey, I will do less coding if I always name the image the same as the enum, because I know I can just take the enum and make it match the image. That is a fair decision to make. Um, all of these decisions, whatever decision you make, you will live with. So what are the downsides? If you rename an enum, you need to remember to rename the image. Uh, but the And it's a little more magical, right? For people making things, do they know what the enum value is? Like, hey, I gave you this image. How does it match the enum? Is it case sensitive? You know, there's all these other little things you have to worry about. It's a little more magic, uh, but it's more convenient. I'm going to choose to say, nope, there's no requirement that they be the same. You have to hook it up manually. I don't know. I, I, it's hard. Find it difficult to say for an image in particular whether or not I feel that's better or worse. I think in general, I like the explicitness. It really makes sure that you've done, you know, you've ticked all the boxes and, and, and really thought all the things through. Um, but you know, there's those other cases where like, no, I just want an engine where I can just go and I want to go quick and I want to have to run through a checkbox, 20 items to do items. If I just name the things right, it works magically. There are advantages to that. Uh, there's also disadvantages. So anyway, I'm going to call it steak. Uh, the other little detail, sorry, I didn't talk about Inkscape on Windows always wants to save as type Inkscape SVG. Maybe there's a way to change that. I noticed I used to have a Linux laptop. It would remember my default. You want to save as optimized SVG. I think I've talked about this before. It takes out a bunch of extra silly metadata you don't need and makes your image a lot smaller. And if you're making a web game, then you know it's important that the files be small so they're delivered to people quickly, especially if they're on a cell phone or have wacky access or whatever. You don't want, you know, you don't want to churn through people's data. Some people have data plans. You want it to be quick. Some people are, are in areas where they don't have the same, you know, fiber optic landline to your house. Or I don't know why I said landline, but you know, whatever. People have different connection um, issues. So make your files as small as possible. And a really easy thing to do is don't use the Inkscape SVG, which is full of silly metadata. Just do optimized. All right. Uh, I guess I need to make other items. Should I? Oh, sorry, uh, popped up another thing. Uh, when you save optimized, it gives you all these options. Like, how, sh how should I optimize it? Do you want to remove unused IDs? It's like, yes, they're unused. I don't need them. Please remove them. Uh, anyway, now that it's saved, let me just like throw some logs on. Um, for the sake of not making the video super long, I'm going to pause recording and I'll be back when I'm done drawing these images. Partially I'm going very fast, partially I'm a bad artist. Here's a log. I'm going to export this log and I'll be right back to show you the um, metal or whatever once I'm done with that. So BRB. All right, and here's some iron. I swear I've drawn iron like this like a million billion times. It's back of iron, right? Let's save it as iron optimized. So I'm calling it log steak iron. Whoops. I, oh, I thought I clicked cancel, but apparently I clicked OK. Okay, and again, go ahead and close this now. It's so silly. Oh no, it might cause data loss. Like I'm gonna lose a bunch of extra metadata I don't care about. Get out of here. All right, let's confirm that we have those items. We sure do, iron log and stake. So let's do what I was talking about where we wanna now, right? How are we gonna get from an enum to the graphic or the item name that we wanna show on the page or all these other things? There's a couple ways to do this. I will do a kind of basic thing and then talk about how I would make this uh, better later. So let me find, gosh, I don't have space here. Uh, where are the things? Here we go. So in player inventory, I threw this enum. I'm just going to throw it in here. Item enum. Uh, that's maybe not a great place. Let's make, because this isn't, 
I don't know. I'm going to add more, and I, I don't want... Okay, there is a rule of thumb that every file should only have a single class. There are a lot of exceptions to that rule. If you do stuff with, um, I don't know if you've heard of like Mediator or things like that, or even if you do web APIs, you're like, hey, look, I'm going to have kind of the request object, the response object, and the thing that handles it all in one file, even though there's three different classes. Fine, great, it breaks the rule, but it's for a good reason. It keeps everything nice and tidy, everything's in one place. We love it. If all I was going to do with a Xenum is just have the type, I would say same thing. Let's just keep it here. There's no reason to move it somewhere else. This is the place it makes sense. But I think I do want to do other things with the item type. I'm going to start adding more stuff down here. There's going to start to be a lot. You know, now this is all about the item type, but not at all about the inventory. So eh, I'm feeling like maybe I want to move this into a, into a separate file. Uh, so I don't want it to be in this tables thing. Maybe I'll move it out into database. That's maybe a weird place. I don't know. Oftentimes there might be like a model folder. So maybe you'd have model and put a bunch of stuff in there. And inside model, you'd have database specific things conceivably. That's one way you could go. I don't, I don't know. For the sake of this video, kind of, I don't, no, no, no I don't like saying that. Let's, let's do it. So I'm going to make a, a model folder. It's going to have all of my data about anything. Uh, and database is just one thing. There are, there is a model for the database tables, but there's other things you might model that don't have to do with the database. Uh, and I think this is one such thing. So we're going to put here uh, the item type, that's a phenom. And if we go back into the player inventory table, we'll do this. Uh, something to do, though. So the reason I kind of didn't want to do this, and you can see it you know, a little bit complaining, um, this squiggly orange underline is saying, hey, the namespace doesn't correspond to the file location. So this is a convention. You don't have to follow this convention, but everyone in the whole freaking world does it for C Sharp the namespace name should match the folder structure. It's a very useful convention to know where things are. Uh, and it's really easy to change. There's no reason to not be afraid to change it. So uh, the same thing I did down here, right, where it said, hey, I don't know what to do, underline, press Alt Enter to apply. That's what I did. I pressed Alt Enter. You can do the same thing here, Alt Enter. Then it's going to give me some choices. So it says, hey, do you want to move RPG model database tables into the the proper namespace, right? It, do you want to move it to model? Because that matches. And I can just click this. I don't actually have to use anything in the sub menu, which is a little weird. I can just click this and it'll do it. But in the sub menu, it says, hey, do you want to do everything in this folder? Yeah, let's do everything in this folder. I know I've got three things. Let's do them all. And then I can do the same thing here. Whoops. Hey, do everything in this folder. And now it's fine. And anywhere else in the code that it was looking for this, it's the IDE has solved it all. So it, it's not hard to move things into folders. Don't be afraid, even if there's tons of files. You're like, ah, oh, but there's like 50 files in there. Like, IDE doesn't care. Alt Enter, move it, move it for the whole folder, done. So that'll do it. Uh, places that didn't before, well, I don't need to say, I get it. OK, um, I guess this didn't have a using statement, or maybe I just never had that. I don't remember. Uh, OK, so why did I move this out? What's the other stuff I want to add? Let's get back on track. I want to have, oh my gosh, it knows. I didn't do this in advance, but I've done this for other other things. So this is what I like to do. So we're going to make an extension class. You can call this anything you want. It doesn't matter. What is important is that it's static. And then inside, you can make another static method. It's important that it's static. And if you have the class static and the method static, then you can do this, which is to use the word this as the parameter name, right? So this would be like the normal way to do it. You could do that. But by putting this in front, which again is only allowed if both these things are static, then elsewhere in your code, you can call this function. I'll show you how. I'm not going to keep this, but let's go to the stack here. We can say, hey, item type dot, and we should have friendly string. Here it is, two friendly strings. So that's that new function we made. And we can just say item type, that's a type item type, which is a little a little weird, right? This could be called anything. It could have been called A, doesn't matter. But it's a type item type and item types, we've made this extension method. And that's what that is. Um, so this turns it into a friendly string. Sure. I think I would prefer to say something like, um, I don't know, get, well, maybe friendly string is good. I don't know, too friendly string. I was thinking like get name, maybe. That's what I would call it. And then here's where you'd say meet fine, you know, maybe like I said, oh, you've called it Ash later, right? It doesn't matter. Now we can come in here and change the name to whatever we want. It doesn't matter that the item type doesn't change, which we don't want to change because it's important in the database, right? I mean, there are ways that we could 
update all the data in the database, but this protect saves us from having to do that work. So we can say meat, ash, iron, maybe I just want to call it metal. I don't know why, whatever. You can do whatever you want there. Uh, yep, yeah, that is a thing to do. And the other thing we could do, same idea, is we want public stack string uh, get image. So we can do the same thing. And that's pretty good. Let's go to www root images items. So I'm not going to bother to put the items in there. Maybe you could. I don't know. I guess you could. You could say, sure, it's items plus this bit. Um, so this, the meat we called steak dot SVG. Uh, and the wood we called log SVG. And the metal we called iron SVG. That'll do, but they're all SVGs. All right. And now the same idea. We now have the image. And maybe you even want to say, look, I want the whole URL in here. Sure. Images, items, whatever. Uh, and now we can do the same thing where we said get name. Why do we change that? So this is get name. Uh, but I don't even know that we're going to show the name anymore. I guess we can show both. What we really want to do now is show the uh, image. So we can say image or item type, sorry, get image. We made that useful function. Uh, let's give it a width and a height. I'll make it 32 pixels, but again, it doesn't have to be. Maybe just to demonstrate it doesn't have to be, we'll change it. But let's see that this works. After all that silly work, let's see that we see some images in there. All right, view my house. All right, we got me, we got the log, we got the wood. Are those all really 32 by 32? Uh, doesn't look like it. Is that not working right? 32 by 32. 32 by 32. I guess it's all down to the item names. Yeah, because they're not. OK, sorry, I see what I did. So this should be a div. Cool, we can do apply changes for that change. It's nice when we can. No, it didn't work. It's also, that might be my fault for using opera there. I don't even know. Maybe it has to be a Chrome or whatever. Opera is Chrome under the hood. OK, so I don't know. The item name looks a little weird. Do you want the item name on there or not? Maybe you do. Um, I mean, I could put the quantity somewhere else. Uh, let's say we do want the name there. Names are useful. We could say, you know what, put that at the top. It'll be on the top right where we'll put the quantity. Uh, let's also center all this stuff. It looks kind of weird that these things aren't centered. So if we go back to stack, we said it has a width of 4 REM. Sure. Uh, let's say the items inside are centered. Uh, so actually, that wouldn't be it. We would do that for the, let's say this is the name. So we can come here and say name, text line center. And then for the image, the image that's inside, uh, it's a block element, but we can say that's a object fit. Is that real? Well, I don't know about that. Um, no, I'm going to say you're with this 22 pixels and you should have a margin on the top and bottom of zero and on the left and right auto. And that's a fairly common way to center images. So let's see what that looks like. And maybe we make the images larger because we would like them to be larger. Doesn't look as centered as I was hoping. What's going on there? So stack. It's funny. Don't scammers will try and scam you. I mean, that's a good note to have. So that is, is it, are they not like display block or something? Hmm, apparently not. Okay. Only block elements can be given margins. Uh, this is in the upper right, and let's make this bigger. Let's play around with this. This image is too small. What if it was 64 pixels? Oh, funny. It doesn't care because I told it out here that it would only be 64. Is that why? 64, 64. There we go. We can do that. Um, I don't know. It looks a little funny up there. I guess we can move it up, right? We don't have to do. Let's see. So I can align from the bottom and do one REM. And maybe the font size should be like 80%, right? There's all kinds of little things we can do here to position stuff. I don't think we want zero, but let's do on the top and bottom a little less. I'll like have it. There we go. How's that looking? So I realized I only changed this one. Uh, but I can go in now and kind of manually apply these. Uh, also, I want it a little further up. So one REM is the height of a line, uh, but it looks like that's not quite enough. So let's do like 1.2. 
sure. All right, I'm going to try and apply all these changes. I've got to remember everything I did. So I don't know why I'm going through this much effort, honestly. But <laughs> bottom, we haven't even made it so you can get items in the game. All we've done is display them. So uh, that's a little silly. But uh, and then I did this. So again, when you do two numbers, the first one is the top and bottom. The second one is left and right. Oops. I just wanted to do half. 0.125 is kind of a silly number, but it's half of 25. Um, if, if you don't like that, you can do other things. You can say, look, I want to do it for me. Do the halves for me. I want to know conceptually in my brain it's half the other thing. That's fair. You can, if you prefer looking at the math that way, uh, I'll leave it like that just to demonstrate that, that works. Let's make the image a little larger. So 64. Or I don't even know if there's really a point to uh, putting the image here, the width, when it is set out in the HTML side. But uh, the reason to put it on the HTML side is that before the image loads, it'll make sure that it takes up the space. I think the same is accomplished with image, but it's still recommended to use width and height properties. I honestly don't fully know why that's still a recommendation. It seems like CSS takes care of that, but I don't know. I just go with the recommendation. It's not hard to, to do. I'll believe that, you know, the makers of writer and, and browsers know, but know something I don't. Uh, I'm sure they have super smart people at Google and JetBrains figuring all this stuff out. Whoops, sorry, that's off page. Makes it awfully hard to see. All right, so here we go. I don't know. Is that exactly how you want to display your items? Maybe not. Maybe you'd rather just have the quantity at the bottom, on, you know, kind of like how these are. I'll leave that up to you. But this shows the inventory with my <laughs> poorly drawn meat, ash, and metal. Let's make it so you can get some items finally. So I'm going to delete some of these things because um, I want to test adding brand new items I've never had before. Uh, so let's remove, I don't know, both of these rows maybe. Delete these two rows. So I have just metal. Fine. Now I want to make a way when pets got exploring. Previously, they've only got experience and leveled up. Uh, let's make them get materials maybe as, as a reward. That, that would be... I think the obvious place to add it. Maybe you want to add shops that you buy things in, whatever. Uh, but let's do exploring with pets. And I think this will go much quicker than everything else we've done. All, all this setup <laughs> was a lot more work. Actually making a pet just put a thing, that'll be easy. Um, so let's go to my house. There's actually one detail I know is going to be a little more difficult. But about that when we get here. Okay, so here is to do make your own game. This is in the house page, right? We've modified this already to inventory. And if you look at what does do explore do, I'm going to control click. Nope, doesn't want to do that. Nope, doesn't want to do that. IDE is feeling feisty today. So I'll just do a classic control F. There's do explore. What does it do? Um, make sure that the character exists. Fair enough. Make sure they have energy. Great. And then, I don't know, make your own game. What should happen? Something? Something awesome? Nothing? Fair enough. Let's go to, I don't know, something. And when something happens, we'll make them get a random, I don't know, one of these three items. So let's say uh, reward equals, I'm going to do random shared. And we'll get next out of the following list of things. You could get wood. Uh, so let's do item type. You could get wood, you could get meat, or you could get iron. Don't know why it had trouble with that. All right, so uh, this next extension is something from, there's a NuGet package already installed here. It's Ben Makes Games Random Helpers. I made it because this is a very common thing you want to do in a game, right? We've got a loot table. I don't need to pull a random item out of it. There are other ways to do it that involve more code. This kind of wraps up that complexity. In the upcoming version of C Sharp to be released in November of 2023 this year, they're going to make a way, like a built-in C Sharp way. I think it's called Sample? Or something? It's something else, but but it picks a single element out of an array. Again, that's not built into C Sharp right now, so you can use Ben Makes Games Random Helpers, which again is already included in RPG game, and this is an easy way uh, to, to pull a random item out of a list. Uh, and I don't know, if you've done a lot of C Sharp programming before, this might be a little more familiar to you. It's like, I want a new random number generator, and then I'm going to call methods on it. Uh, C Sharp, kind of recently, it's been out for a little while now, they have this shared thing where it's like, no, no, you don't need to make your own random number generators. We've made one for you. It's going to be super random. 
it's safe for doing asynchronous stuff and threading and you probably won't run into that. But anyway, they've taken care of a lot of complexity that you might not even be aware of. They've solved it. Microsoft has solved it. It's in random shared. So use random shared. Uh, and then, yeah, let's pull a random bit of loot. And then we would like to gain that loot. So we're going to want to give it to a player. This is where I was saying a little bit of complexity comes in. Uh, I'll make a helper function to do that. But let's say character name found one. And let's say the loot. So reward. And here we can get the name because we already have get name. And that'll get, you know, ash, uh, meat, metal, whatever we call all these names. What was it? Yeah, meat, ash, and metal. So I did a control. I did the shortcut, keyboard shortcut to jump in here. So let me go back. Oops, where'd you go? Nope. It always bugs me when I close the tab. It doesn't take me back to the last tab I was at. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, great. That does that, except we haven't actually given anyone anything. So let's do that part next. We need to find the item. And if it didn't exist, right? So in this case, suppose we find metal, we're going to find a metal record and we're going to add one. But we might get wood and the player has never had wood before. So we need to make up a new record, a new row in this table to say, oh, this is for wood. And now they're at one. They, they have that item now. So I'm going to go ahead and make something to help with that. Let's make a new thing in our functions folder. And I'm going to call this uh, inventory helpers, I guess. We'll call it what we want. Helpers, I don't know. Uh, this can be static, uh, which I'm only doing. I'm not going to do the static static thing for purposes of extension methods like before, but there's no reason for anyone to like, this just prevents anyone from saying, I want a new inventory helpers. Like there's no reason to do that. You don't need to. So let's just eliminate the choice so that people can't. Uh, that's funny. It's getting a little excited. It's not what I want to do. Um, I'm going to make a function. So we'll call it, uh, I don't know, uh, add inventory or collect inventory. I don't know. Collect, collect item. Let's call it collect item. So we're going to want a few things. We're going to need the database. So we're going to need a pet game database. Give me the pet game database. That's what it's called, right? Oops, where did it go? RPG game. I'm sorry. Ha 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 ha. I keep just not used to it yet. So I'll just call that DB. I think that's a universally accepted shorthand for database. No one would be surprised to see something called DB. In general abbreviations, you might not want them. But again, I think that's probably pretty safe. And then, as I've mentioned before in other videos, what is the minimal amount of information we need to look up the data in the database and get the job done? And that is always the ID. So there is a given player. We're going to want to give them an item. There is the item that we're going to want to give them. So here's the item. And then a quantity. Um, apparently, it's long. So how much do we want to give them? For convenience purposes, I'm going to say, nah, maybe we shouldn't do that. Let's make you be explicit. You have to tell me how much. I don't, I don't want to leave it up to you to make a mistake. Again, tell me how much. Check off the boxes. Do, do the right thing. Tell me how much you want. Uh, and then we will look up from the database whether or not they, they have that item and how to do all that stuff. So uh, let's make stack again. So we'll say put inventories. And we're looking for the first one. Oh, yeah, this is going to be asynchronous. I guess that's true. Uh, let's go ahead and, and do this then. We want it to be asynchronous. We want people to know. So if it's going to be asynchronous, like we've done in all of other other methods. I haven't talked about it in this video, but if you look at my house, you can see right they're all async task, async task, async task. It's because we don't know how long the database is going to take. So let's make this async task as well. Uh, and then we will therefore await for the database to complete. You can see that fixed a little warning there. It was trying to tell us like, hey, you told me I'm async, but I don't see you awaiting anything. Are you sure? Thank you, IDE, for <laughs> protecting me from myself. So we want the owner ID to be the player ID. And we want the item type to be the item in question, right? So we're looking up, we're saying, hey, I want to give you, let's say, three wood for this player. Okay, can we find a row in the database. Oh, that's not the database, right? Do we find a row in here that matches that is the, of the right type and for the right player? Does it exist? Uh, if it doesn't exist, then we're going to have a null. So that's one case. We didn't find anything, it's null. Or maybe we did find something. If we did find something, then easy. We add the quantity that was asked for, right? They said, whatever, I found five of them, fine. Plus equals five, got it. Uh, if we didn't find it, then we need to make a new one. So we will do that. So we'll say, Fine stack, and maybe we should let's do new stack. 
So we will make a new player inventory. RPG game model database tables. Looks correct. And we will provide the required properties. Did I make them all required? Yes, I did. Uh, that should be required too. Uh, boop, boop. Again, just make me check off the boxes, right? What are all the things that I need to specify? I need to specify the, and it's going to tell me here, it says, hey, you didn't tell me the owner ID. You didn't tell me the type. You didn't tell me the quantity. Uh, that's incredible that GitHub Copilot will do it all for me. Wonderful. And then we will say, great, add that to the database, add this new stack. Uh, and that'll do it. So to summarize, look for, uh, you know, the, the player item row, right, that matches. That's the minimum information we need to, you, to, to find the row we're interested in for a player and an item, find that row. If we didn't find it, we'll make a new one. Make sure it's now in the database. Uh, if we did find it, just increase the quantity and we're done. So let's go back to my house and down here we can say, there are inventory helpers, collect item. We need to await that as asynchronous. And we can pass in the database, which it looks like we don't have right here. So we're going to need that. Uh, we have the current player, or sorry, it's like player info ID, right? We've seen that before. What's the item? Well, that's the reward, and they're only going to get one. Uh, but as mentioned, we do need a database here. So let's pass it in, right? So when if something's going to happen, we're going to need the database, and we should get now a little error somewhere. Here we go. Yep. It says, hey, uh, you didn't pass in the database that it asked for. Here it is. So database goes in. So just roll on up until <laughs> we get where we finally have the database connection. We don't want to make a new one, so funny little detail, right? Why not inside one of these functions just make up a new database? Uh, that is because, is it to make sure that everything stays in sync and, and you don't have like some of the, because you could lose the database connection, right? It's uncommon, but it is possible that as the thing is running, uh, even though it's all on your server, maybe your server loses its connection to your database for some reason, or the database goes down for maintenance or something like that. You want that whatever you were doing on the database, that it all happens at once, either, and that it, it either all happens or none of it happens. You don't want to be in a state where like some of it finished and some of it didn't. So, to help you make sure you're just using the same connection to that database, right? This says, give me a new connection. Here it is. It's called DB. We use that one connection all the way through, and then we do a single save changes at the end. And that'll get you like 90% there. There are some other funny little caveats, and you'll, you'll run into them later. There's, there's a little bit with the inventory where things could go a little wrong, but it's, it's, it's a whole other thing. So this is going to be good enough for now. Um, so the trick, by the way, if you're curious, it's this, it's that we might add something new. There, there are cases where that can lead to some funniness, but it's gonna, it's gonna work out here. Um, so great. Give them a wood. You only get one. We could make a random number. Let's make it slightly more interesting. Let's say quantity equals random shared. Let's get a number up to two. That's actually zero to one. So we'll add one. Now it's one or two. Now we can have the quantity, and we can say found quantity whoops, times whatever it was. Great. Let's try it out. Let's go exploring with our pets and see that we get things. Uh, there is something I know isn't going to quite work that we'll fix up afterwards. Uh, but let's see that what we have works. So let's go exploring. Didn't find anything. Let's explore again. Oh, didn't find anything. Let's try again. Oh my gosh, you're really bad at this. Oh, is this for real? Is, is it broken? There we go. Found one meat, plus four experience points. But where's the meat? I think if we refresh, we will see it. Yep. So this is where I was talking about before, right? We know that items changed, uh, so we would like to um, reload the database. So what is a way to do that? There are a couple solutions. Something happens. One thing to do is to make, rather than return a string, we return something a little more complex that says like, Hey, I need you to reload the database. I think that's my preference. There are other ways we could add to some other local variable, but yeah, let's do let's do that. So let's make a new thing down here. And this is where I was talking about. We're going to make a new class. It's only used in the context of my house, nowhere else. So I'm totally happy putting a second bit of code in here. Um, actually, I think that is for the code block. 
Yeah, this is a really long, this should really be a good bond. That's a whole other thing. Let's not worry about it. So we actually need to put the class in here. So let's put public class sealed for, if you don't want to put the word sealed, you don't have to here. Uh, so let's call this like adventure results. So this is going to have two things. It's going to have a required string that's the description. And you only initialize it, and then you never change it again. There's no reason to. You could also use a record here, but I'll use a class. People are a little more familiar with them. Uh, let's do another thing, too, that's like, um, let's not make this required. Uh, I don't know. Should reload inventory. That's maybe one thing. Uh, and maybe you would have should reload pets or other stuff, but maybe you see where I'm going with this. So rather than um, returning a string, we will, for all these, return a result. And the result will tell us what we ought to do. So now let's fix these bugs. OK, it needs to be a new adventure result where this is the description. And that's it. We don't need to set should reload inventory because there's no inventory uh, change here. Let's do the same thing here. Good. A little copy paste to save myself a little work. Maybe not as much as I would have liked, honestly. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing here. Adventure result. But here, we should reload inventory because we know that this function, this adventure, added some inventory. Now, if we go out, we should have an error. Oh, actually, we have a few errors. What's going on? Here we go. Here's the errors. Uh, so we got a description here. That's not really true. It's not a description anymore. This is a uh, adventure result. So let's call it what it is. And then here we can do the description. And then here, we know we're going to load the characters because they always got experience points. Maybe they don't. Maybe you would like to change this and say, you know, nothing happened. Sorry, you get no experience points. You don't need to reload. Uh, we do always cost energy, though. So it's probably safe to always reload the characters, at least with the code as it's structured now. Uh, but we will say, hey, if the adventure result, if the adventure result, sorry, slurring over my words there, should result the the bleh, bleh <laughs> should reload the inventory, then yes, GitHub Copilot, you are totally correct. Let's load the inventory. So let's reload. So hopefully that all made sense. Let me recap uh, before. Oh, hold on, I had some errors. Let's fix the errors. Uh, return new adventure. There was a semicolon there. I think that was it. Okay. So let me let me recap once this is all running. All right. So to recap, this used to just return a string that was the description. That's it. But now we want to return more information. We want to know, hey, was there new inventory? And therefore, do I need to reload the inventory as a result of this adventure? I don't want to reload the inventory all the time because in most changes, in most cases, it hasn't changed, right? So why do the extra work? And depending on what you're doing, maybe it is fine. Maybe you're like, yeah, actually, for me, 90% of the time, there is going to be a change. And for those 10%, I don't care. I'll just reload the inventory anyway, right? Let's not over-optimize something if it requires me to make this result object and pass it around, right? This is this is adding complexity to the code. Um, so anyway, maybe you decide you need it, maybe you decide you don't. In this case, I thought, yes, I want to return more information. It's not just the description. Uh, it's inventory. And maybe for you, there's like images or other things you want to return as well to, to display in the pop-up. It's not just a text description. Maybe you even play a sound. I don't know. So whatever needs to be returned along with these adventure results, pass them on up. And then here, we used to just be getting a string out of this thing. Now we get a whole adventure result object. We're going to pull the description out, and we're going to check. Do we need to reload the inventory? And let's see if that works. So let's go exploring again. Didn't find anything. Oh, found something rad. I didn't code up to something rad. And let's go explore the other pet. Found two meat. All right, and now we're at three. Wonderful. Can you find something else? I would love if you found something else. Found an ash. And there's the ash popping right in. So here we go. Oh my goodness, we have an inventory system. Um, one particular inventory system where you have stacks of items. Only took an hour and eight minutes. Oh my goodness, sorry about the lengthy video. Um, but yeah, as you can see, adding the items really wasn't that much work. <laughs> it's like, yeah, throw some new items in the database, whatever. But it's like, oh, we need some pictures. Oh, we want to display cards. We want some little styling, um, all this stuff. It's, it's always the UI that takes the most time, I feel like. Uh, so anyway, but it works. You have items in your, in your RPG game. Uh, what will you do with those items? I guess that's a topic for another video, right? Can I combine metal and ash to make a sword? Can I cook meat into a kebab? I don't know. It, it's up to you to add new buttons or a, a store. Maybe you just sell some of this stuff. Oh, you got a fancy gold goblet. Just sell it for money. Whatever you want to do, um, it's up to you to kind of take it from here. So anyway, thank you very much. I hope 
that's given you some inspiration for your game. If you are making a game, I would love to know about it. Post screenshots, I don't know, post a link if you put it online, that'd be incredible. Uh, and if you have suggestions for future videos, I would love to know, or questions about things I, I, don't know, I do tend to type and forget to explain all my thoughts. So if there's anything confusing, feel free to put a, a question as well. I'll, I'll read the comments and happy to respond and explain what in the world I was doing. So anyway, thank you again very much. Uh, have fun and goodbye.